Hello, my brothers and sisters. This is your brother from another mother, Mark De Jesus. And today I'm going to get into the subject of compulsions. What happens when we're breaking free, moving into a new direction? What is the healing process journey? What does it look like? And many will write to me and say, hey, I'm working through this area and I'm not sure what to do. So I pray that today in what I share and talk with you about will be a blessing to your life and to your journey. If it is, go to markdehesus.com. You can join our mailing list. There is a free download that you can get. I want to be a blessing to your life. And it is my passion to help you in your healing and freedom journey, especially when it comes to relationship health, mental health, emotional health, all that stuff is important in your life, in your journey, because it helps us to manifest the fruit of the spirit. And isn't that what our walk with God should really point us to is growing relationally and what it looks like to receive God's love, to engage that love, to see ourselves through that love and pour out the beauty of what God is doing and continues to do and has done in our lives to others. And so I pray that what I share today will be a blessing to you because I believe that mental health is a part, a big part of God's heart for your life and for your journey. It's not a side subject over here. And I believe that we can all grow in various awareness. I've been doing a lot on the subject of obsessive compulsive type of battlegrounds. And many have arrived to my material based on that. Many people who've been a part of the tribe for years and have been connected to the ministry work that my wife and I are passionate about have also been blessed. That, that as I've been talking about perfectionistic battles and how we deal with our thoughts and having a better relationship with our thoughts. Well, on the subject of OCD, if I was to narrow it down and summarize it, it's basically like this. You have a subject in your life or many subjects in your life that create a disturbance within you create a disturbance of meaning. There's a certain interpretation and it screams out. It must be fixed, it must be dealt with. It must be fixed. You got to deal with this thing. And it goes into a lot of different areas. It goes into your faith walk in your salvation. It messes with your salvation or your standing with God, or maybe you've done something. One of the popular ones is that questioning your salvation, or uh, I say popular ones, <laughs> not necessarily like popular, like, yay, we love that one. <laughs> Common is really the word. Uh, committing the unpardonable sin, or I've said something, or I gave a vow, or I did something, or I did this, and and there's there's this massive disturbance that's there. It's a disturbance in a thought that comes in. The thought may be sexual in nature, and you interpret it as uh, I'm a sexual deviant. What do I? What am I going to do? You have a thought about injuring someone, injuring yourself, uh, about cleanliness. It can be about relationships, dating relationships, specifically moving towards marriage. There's a there's a there's a obsession, a disturbance that you're constantly in turmoil about. And usually what happens is it's natural that you have a disturbance, you do something to alleviate the disturbance. And if it was that simple, what you do would alleviate, bring peace, and you go back to life, right? But what happens is it comes back again. Then it goes into another area. Then it goes into another area. Then it goes into another area. Or you just keep spinning in the same disturbance over and over again. Maybe it has different questions and you solve this question. It comes out over here, right? Then you develop what's basically an obsessive compulsive pattern. So you have the obsession, the disturbance. Then you have the compulsion, which is what you do to neutralize, to calm the disturbance. You hear the disturbance and you do something to calm it. And so that may be something you do in your head of mental loops and things that you go into. It may be certain confession. It may be talking to someone. It may be researching. It may be reading your Bible. Many believers Read their Bible out of compulsion, right? What do I mean by that? You're reading the Bible to alleviate something negative. And I, I, I find that Christianity, if it gets infiltrated by law, by performance-driven living, perfectionism, it will infiltrate and cause you to do a lot of things out of that disturbance, out of compulsion. I'm going to go to church. Why are you going to church? Because, you know, if I don't, I'm going to give in an offering. Why are you giving the offering? Well, if I don't, oh, God's going to. I'm going to do this fasting thing. Why? Well, because, 
You know, <laughs> we do things out of trying to fix a disturbance. And it's understandable that we can get confused, but you have to begin to see I'm being obsessive and compulsive because I keep doing these things. And it doesn't allow us to connect to relationship. You're trying to fix something. You're never really connecting. You're trying to fix that relationship with God so you can feel better. But you never really actually connect because connecting with God is not based on you doing everything right. Connecting with God is not based on you getting everything right. But boy, the lies of perfectionism, the lies of performance get us really trapped. And we get lost in these areas and these issues. Many people are writing to me or people that I'm meeting with, and they're recognizing this is my obsession subject, relational, intrusive thought, uh, some kind of biblical subject. I get lost in and they recognize it. And here's my compulsion. I think in your healing journey, it's important that you understand here's my obsession and here's the compulsion. Here's what I do to try to alleviate it. As a part of the healing journey, and there's many perspectives I provide about what I found to be helpful and what I recommend and what I think is has been fruitful for me and those I've helped. Again, this is not meant to be in conflict with any help that you're getting. Remember, I'm a brother from another mother. I'm not trying to take over your world. I'm sharing here and allowing grace and love to flow through what I'm sharing here. I want to walk alongside of you, encourage you. And many people write to me and saying, I am starving the compulsion, because that's one of the things I talk about. Starving the compulsion and learning to direct, gently direct, redirect your attention to in the midst of this. I'm loved and I'm okay right now in the midst of this disturbance. And so you may feel I committed the unpardonable sin. I committed the unpardonable sin. And somebody write to me and say, I think I committed the unpardonable sin. Do you know? And I'll write back and say, you didn't. (laughs) And they'll go, how do you know that? Because you asked me. (laughs) You're on the other side. (laughs) You're in a completely different ditch. You think it's this ditch of the unpardonable sin. No, you have a hyper oversensitive conscience about right and wrong, and it has been distorted. It's been distorted by these underpinnings of what I call the seven distortions. If you're new to my material, go to OCD help, the help page. I talk about the seven distortions, perfectionism, struggle with uncertainty, the distorted meaning of your thoughts, overestimating threats, inflated responsibility, intense need to control thoughts, and difficulty with emotions. And th- there's more of this that you can look at in my OCD help page, markdehesus.com forward slash OCD help. And any obsessive compulsive, the biggest thing you'll see is those seven distortions, they're, they're operating in clockwork together. It's like without even thinking and awareness. So what I want to do is bring awareness to those Because then as you work through the healing journey, you start to become more aware of what's really going on in your heart and life and what creates all this pressure and all this internal angst that you have going on. So what happens is as you starve the compulsion, whatever that is, checking, praying, talking out, maybe you have relationship OCD and you constantly break up and get back together. You, You have to understand, um, The list of compulsions is endless, just as the list of obsessions can be endless. So the key is learning to starve the compulsion. You may even go through exposure therapy where you sit down with a therapist and they intentionally walk through where this thing gets triggered, whatever it is. And you learn to ride through it and practice no longer being afraid of it, right? You can practice that in your own life as it arises because I think life should be one where we, oh, okay, stuff's kicking up. I'm going to have a loving response to this, right? So you starve your compulsion. Okay, I'm not going to check. I'm not going to research. I'm not going to do a search on how can I be sure that I'm saved and I really mean it, (laughs) right? And that, that religious OCD gets tricky because you actually have to starve your incessant reading of the Bible. Oh my goodness, Mark's telling me not to read my Bible. 
well, <laughs> yeah. And if you're reading it compulsively, it has to be realigned where you're understanding the ways of God relationally. So my point being, you starve the compulsion. Okay, I'm not going to feed it. And what happens? Withdrawals kick in. You feel like I'm doing something wrong by not researching my salvation or researching these thoughts or researching, um, you know, do I have, you know, do I have shoulder cancer? You know, do I have all these things that you, you start spinning and you start going to? And in our information overload that we live in, right? We got information everywhere. At, you know, the touch of a button, you can access, right? So much information. And obsessive compulsive, it works against you because it's it's feeding all these subjects you're going to. So you stop feeding the compulsion and you start feeling withdrawals. Anxiety actually increases. So you get discouraged. Oh my goodness, this is never going to get better. And many times you're actually right where you need to be. Because when you move in the opposite direction, because obsessive compulsive tendencies involve actually moving into the opposite direction involves moving into what you're constantly running away from. And you'll feel like you're heading in the wrong direction. So anxiety and guilt kick up. And for the obsessive compulsive, anxiety and guilt are your biggest enemies. But right now, they're your best friends. Yes. Sounds confusing, doesn't it? They're your biggest enemies, but they're also your best friends. You've made best friends with fear and with anxiety and guilt. You listen to it. Every time it talks, anxiety kicks up. You feel that. You follow what it's telling you to do. Guilt rises up. You listen to it. You try to alleviate and fix what it tells you to do. And they're terrible friends. They're not your friends, but you've made them your friend. It's okay. I've made them my friends. And my best friend, they had, um, they had me on speed dial. And every time anxiety, guilt came up, there's the two of them. So when you starve your compulsion, I'm not going to do that incessant repentance prayer. You know, I have people write to me about that. I've got this thought. I've got this thought. And I'll tell many of them, take a break for repenting for a couple weeks or a month. Take a break for a month from repenting because they clearly have an obsessive compulsive pattern. There's constantly trying to alleviate, you know, like uh, I heard, I heard it said of Martin Luther where uh, one of his overseers or priests said to Martin Luther, Martin, come to me for confession when you actually have something <laughs> to confess. Why? Because he was spinning in stuff that didn't need to be addressed. I appreciate that guy, man. He fought for so much and went through a lot. And it's pretty clear that he, he was obsessive compulsive and there's, there's evidence, I've talked about this too, you know, John Bunyan and many others that we could get into that have struggled with this. So if you've got this battle, you're in good company because there's, there's a lot of others that battle with it as well too. And so you have to realize guilt and anxiety are your friends. You could attribute that as to God or the Holy Spirit or it's to good conscience. God's not giving you the spirit of fear. He's not putting anxiety on you. He's not putting guilt on you in a constant chronic cycle of spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. Because what's the fruit? The fruit is confusion. And God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. But peace is not when you feel anxiety running and hiding. Peace is moving through the anxiety. I feel this, but I'm not serving it. And that's really what starving your compulsion is. I feel this, but I'm not serving what it's directing me to do anymore. Whew. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's glory in this place. That's a good word right there. I got, I, sorry, I have a minute with myself. I'm getting encouraged. There's no life in that. And the overcoming journey, the sweet spot of overcoming, is I feel it. I feel it, but I'm not serving it. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. The problem with OCD and feelings is we get lost in them because we get lost in interpretation. We don't know how to interpret them. 
So when you starve the compulsion and you have these withdrawals and guilt and anxiety increase, and that's actually where you're like, okay, I'm climbing up the roller coaster now, and here we go. But I'm going to get through this. And all you do, all you need, sometimes is a few rounds of going through where you don't feed the compulsion and you realize I'm okay and I'm still alive. And the world, the sky actually isn't falling. And God is bigger than my ability to get this perfect, right? Then you have your days where you oh, you go back and you do your repentance or you do this thing or you confess or you, you look up stuff online or you try to fix or you, or you break up and you do, you, you, you do your goofy behavior. It's okay. It's all right. It's, right. it's going to take you some rounds where you go through those old things again and you get back and go, okay, I realize this is not serving. I realize it's not serving. And, and I have to, even in my work, where I see certain emails and certain things come in where I'm like, if I respond to this, I'm just adding reassurance to you. And that's where it takes discernment, right? I'm just feeding the subject. And so I want to redirect you back to the real issue at hand. The real issue at hand is the seven distortions, but under the seven distortions is the broken areas of your life that need healing. Healing in the Father's love, healing in nurture, healing in how to see yourself with greater kindness, greater love, greater patience, learning unconditional love. So what happens is in the midst of starving the compulsion, you're like, what do I do? What do I do now? I'm just in this, like what most people describe and what I felt is you're like in this abyss, like you're floating and you're like, I don't even know. What's that feeling like? It's no, it's, it's, it's where no man has gone before. You haven't gone into this territory because you have an obsession. You feed it with a compulsion. You stay in that loop. You know, something ain't right. And you know, this is whole thing's kind of goofy, but you do it anyway. And then you go, I'm not doing that. What do I do with myself? It's like, when I talk about when I stopped serving fear as like my master, I didn't know what to do with myself because I would check for it, look for it. Because I didn't know how to feel safe in the midst of imperfection. And so when you starve the compulsion, you actually set yourself up to start actually healing. And maybe you go, what? I thought that's part of the healing. That's actually just setting it up. Because now... Remember, OCD is the grand distractor. It gets you lost in whatever subject you spin about. Now we're going to learn what I don't know, which is unconditional love. I don't know how to be loved right where I am. I only feel peace when I feel like I've checked the boxes. And so you learn to allow yourself to see the broken areas of your life without first trying to fix them all the time. You see them. And you acknowledge God's love for you in the midst of seeing your brokenness. I spent many decades of my life never really looking at my brokenness and my flaws. I thought I did. I thought I did. I'm going to get into a whole one broadcast (laughs) and, and probably more. And why working through emotions is so hard for perfectionists. And if you're OCD, yes, you're a perfectionist. Yeah, yeah, yes, you are. I'm going to save you some time. Yes, you are. In fact, you, you're you nuclear level perfectionist. Nuclear. Obsession compulsive is the nuclear reactor version of perfectionism. So you have a zero tolerance policy for anything that's weak or vulnerable or flawed, especially in a certain area. You might be able to be gracious all right, in other areas, but there's this one area or maybe multiple <laughs> unacceptable, must fix, must fix, sky is falling, I must do it now, gotta change this, gotta deal with this, let me talk to somebody, let me get, we get in all those things. When you get rid of the compulsion, then you, you're just a vulnerable hot mess. And this is where you actually practice. God, you love me right where I am. And you learn to relate to your father in heaven. Because we're all so chock full with father wounds and father issues. And and we're avoiding the father. In the starving the compulsion, you learn. I want to learn what it means to feel loved. 
you actually learn to actually feel because under OCD, you never actually feel. You spend time fixing things. You never actually know what it is you're going through. So that's why when somebody comes to me and they're like, Mark, I, I got to make sure that I'm, I, I'm saved. And I, how do I assure myself? And it's like, no, this is, this is an OCD thing. Yeah. But I got to make sure, can you tell me this scripture? I said, no, tell me about your dad. Yeah. But I got to, I got to make sure that I know that I'm a child of God. No. Um, how, how's nurturing your life? No, 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 Mark. What, what, what I need, I got these thoughts that I have and I got, yeah. So, um, tell me about your, um, your development emotionally, who helped you deal with your emotions? Who taught you how to work through your emotions? Yeah, yeah, my family was good. I, I, I didn't say your family was bad. So this is where the healing actually starts. You start becoming aware of what's actually there. To the perfectionist ocd -er, you don't want to look at that. Because seeing flaws creates disturbance. Disturbance creates compulsion. And you're always... Wiping and cleaning things down constantly in your life. And so the healing pathways actually stop doing all that and actually learn because Jesus didn't die on the cross so that you and I would spend our days constantly trying to fix ourselves. It puts all the weight back on you, all the pressure back on you. You're just living back in just law-based living. When you stop the compulsion, you actually have to acknowledge your brokenness at a deeper level and you allow yourself to actually learn how great and how loving he is in the midst of your goofy battles, your goofy thoughts. You're goofy. It's all right. So am I. I'm super goofy. And my journey is first being loved, not first being fixed. So, in the midst of the compulsion, I'm actually learning, wow. As I see people peel back, now you can start seeing, because under OCD, you can't see. You're lost in your subject. You starve the compulsion. No, I'm not going to ask for forgiveness and try to figure out that thing. I've been doing that a million times. No, I'm, I'm starving that right now. And what I'm actually learning is how much God loves me and how much grace there actually is. And then you start becoming aware. Slowly, you start to see things in your childhood and your development. Because you'll see the emotional aspect of your life wasn't cultivated and developed. And this is one of the reasons why I believe when Jesus talked about coming into the kingdom, he says, you got to come as a child, have that humility and teachability, and you got to be born again. We're going to start this whole thing over. And I think it's important to, this is not taught. I never heard this taught, but I think this is important. That Jesus is like, we're not going to build on your upbringing. We're going to start from the beginning. Born again, back to the beginning. Start all over. Right? You're, you have to be reparented by your new dad. And this is, makes Perfection is very, it's very uncomfortable to get perfectionists to address their father or mother wounds and stuff because they've crafted a world in their life that doesn't allow them to see. And they're black and white thinkers, so they think if they talk about father, mother wounds and stuff like that, that their parents were terrible and they're being dishonoring. It's all this black and white thinking. No, it's, they don't allow themselves to see things they need to see. As I'm starving the compulsion, I, I'm now... The call is to be more present because in OCD, you're distracted. You're not there. You're not there with people. You're not there. With, you're not actually connecting with God. You might be trying to fix, oh, God, I come before you. I do this thing, all these hoops you go through. You're not actually connecting. You ever been with somebody at a meal or having coffee and you feel like you want to go, you snapping your, you know, hey, look over here, right? You ever talk with somebody and they're, they're kind of like looking over your shoulder? It's not with you. And we do that a lot. God is loving us, and we're like, yeah, yeah but I got you know, to make sure I live right. Because uh. when you starve the compulsion, you realize your Christian life needs renewal in the love and grace of God. You need a reboot. And that's why I said to myself, God, just go to the root system, go to the foundation, because I realize the problem is not the problem. I think it's this relationship thing. I think it's this anxiety thing. Those things are leading to distortions. And underneath the distortion, I don't know how to be loved. 
And then as you recognize things, because really the healing process is, is involves recognizing brokenness, making room to understand how it influences your thinking in your life, because turning the ship is not just an instant quick fix. It's a journey. And no matter how old you are, it doesn't matter. Make room for the journey. And there comes a point in time where the perfectionism of OCD needs a powerful connection to unconditional love and new layers. Where as you recognize things and recognize how they affected your life, you allow yourself to grieve. Because there's an inner critic within you that won't shut up. And arguing with the inner critic doesn't win. Healing wins. And healing journey involves grieving. And grieving often involves tears, often involves connecting here, my heart. Father, you love me. So as I starve compulsion, I become better relationally because I got this thing screaming at me, but I've made a decision. I'm going to listen to you and be with you because the healing process involves healing how I receive love from God, healing how I love myself, and healing how I interact with you because in my interaction with you, as I'm talking with you, the invisible God is making his ways visible as you and I talk together and I work out and walk out what it means to be loved and and you work out what it means to receive love and love me back and we're working through all our issues and stuff like that. The greatest way that God works is in our relating to one another. So as you starve the compulsion, you actually get now, you start moving towards what actually is needed. I hope you're catching this. And one of the things I want to recommend is more of a heart healing journey process. I have a book on that, but really helping to shift how you relate to yourself which was a game changer for me in my life and my journey and the OCD healing process really started to take shape when I wrote this book and, 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 and put down and documented what I was learning and God loves me and I love myself learning to love yourself the way that God sees you activating it, reacting and responding because when you starve the compulsion, you feel this emptiness right and maybe you'll notice wow there's been depression here all along i didn't even see it you'll see there wow there's just this deep ache of emptiness and loneliness and ocd will want to come in and distract that too yeah you're depressed because you're not a good enough christian you're not even a christian you're all, all these things that just get you off track no i see it and i embrace that's what i'm going through And God, you love me in this. And I'm going to learn how to be loved in the midst of this. That's been my journey. And I'm never turning back. And I want to bless you with that, that you can experience healing. You can experience freedom. You can overcome. It'll take some practice. But take this to heart. As you starve your compulsions, you feel the fear, you feel the guilt, but you're like, I'm not serving you anymore. You're not my friends. We are are breaking up fear and guilt we are no longer friends how's that have a staff meeting and go anxiety and guilt we're we're not buddies anymore we're not friends and i know you're going to keep texting me and calling me and i'm going to block your call and block your text and then you're going to change numbers and you're going to keep calling but i just want you to know you're blocked (laughs) no longer friends with you anymore there is no condemnation God is not sitting there condemning me all day to get my attention. And that takes healing our God lens. Because for many of you, like me, you thought condemnation and anxiety was God speaking to you. Condemnation and and, and fear are ways to manipulate somebody. If I put fear on you, I'm manipulating your emotion to get you to do something, right? Right? You better do this or this is going to happen to you right now, right? I manipulate your emotions. If I condemn you and guilt you and shame you, I manipulate your emotions to then do something that I want you to do. And God is not a manipulator. So today's a day to relearn who he is. And as you start that compulsion, what you're learning is you're learning to practice being loved. 
So I pray this is a blessing to your life and your journey and encourages you and those that you love. If it is, go to markdesus.com, consider supporting the resource work, and you can do that with a one-time donation or you can support on a regular monthly basis. And I look forward to being a blessing and providing more materials for your healing and freedom journey. But in the meantime, Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, I'm going to marinate on some other topics. You can send questions to me, mark at markdehesus.com. And you never know, one of your questions may appear in an episode as I add value to the lives of those who are tuning in. So anyways, also working on my next book project. It looks like it's going to be on OCD. So uh, pray for me as I work through that. And in the meantime... I'm out.